Hey again, Sparkies and Sparky parents. The book that we read tonight was Sparky Shines His Light. And we saw how Sparky at the end of the book became a very thankful firefly again and was able to shine his light and save his friends. Well, we just have about 10 questions that go along with this story. So I'm going to read them to you guys. Feel free to pause me at any time so that you can answer those questions together as a family. So our first question is, what kind of bug is Sparky? And if you said firefly, then you were right. And what is so special about fireflies? That's right. Fireflies can light up the darkness when you are outside with them. They're also really fun to catch. All right, Matthew 5, 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. What does that verse mean? This verse tells us that as we let our light shine, so as we let Jesus be shown through us, that other people will see that and that God's going to be glorified. So as we do things like obey our parents, obey God, tell the truth, don't lie, don't steal, um, serve other people, as we do those things, everyone around us will see that. They'll see those good works that you're doing and God will be glorified. Ultimately, that's going to be like an indicator. People are going to say, hey, you've got something different. You're doing something different. What is that? They're going to want it too. They want to know what you have that they don't. And you guys have Jesus. And when we shine that light, God in heaven is glorified. So our next one is name everyone who lives in your house. So name everybody that lives in your house. And after you name everybody that lives in your house, go ahead and, and, and name what they're good at, what they're talented at, what their skills are. Name something that they do really well. So at my house, we've got my husband, Matt, and he is a really good writer. So he's like super good wordsmith. And then I've got my daughter, Lorelai, and she's four. And she is bubbly and energetic. She's definitely an extrovert. Um, but she loves singing. She's really good at it. Then we've got Raleigh. He's my almost two-year-old. And he has the best smile. He's always smiling. He's just such a happy kid. And then we've got David, our 10-week-old. And he's just a little itty bitty baby. And he's just cute. He's just cute, you guys. He makes his little baby faces and smiles at us. And we make googly eyes back at him. He's just super cute. All right, our next question is why should we listen to teachers? Hebrews 13, 7 says, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. So as we see the leaders and teachers in our lives showing who Jesus is and living out that life, we also want to imitate them. So we should definitely obey them because they're following Jesus. And as they follow Jesus, we can learn how to better follow Jesus too. Our next question is, why should we listen to our parents? One, God tells us to. He says, obey your parents. It's one of the Ten Commandments. I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to you guys says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. So God's saying, obey your parents and do what is right, and it will go well with you, and you'll live a long time. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. What should you guys do when you are frightened about something? Who can help you be brave? So if we're afraid of something, we can always ask our parents or our sister or our brother or our aunts or uncles or our grandma or grandpa to help us. But we can also ask God, we can also pray to him and tell him what we're afraid of and he'll calm our fears. 
Hebrews 13, 6 says, So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? So the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. God's here, and he's going to help you. He stands by you. He'll help you through anything. So as long as you are trusting in him and asking him for help, you can get through anything. And you can be brave. God will give you that courage. Our next question is, who can help us feel better when we are alone or sad? Hebrews 13, 5 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So God can help us feel better when we feel alone or sad because God is never going to leave us. He's always going to be there for us, no matter what. And he loves us so much. Why should you guys be thankful? We have so many things that we can be thankful for. We can be thankful for our parents, the roof over our head, the lunch or the supper that we ate the toys that we have, the friends that we have, the special relationships that we have with our grandparents. There are so many reasons to be thankful. The biggest reason to be thankful though is that God sent his son Jesus to die for our sins so that we could have life in him, so that we could be with him forever in heaven. I want you guys to list some things that you guys are thankful for. So go ahead and tell your parents things that you're thankful for. Ephesians 5.20, we're going to start at 19 actually. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're called to always give thanks. Even when life is hard, when life's easy, we can give thanks. But during both circumstances, we should always be giving thanks. There's always something that we can be thankful for. So I want you guys to think about who are your friends. Tell your parents, maybe your closest two or three friends. And then spend some time praying for them this week. Pray for those friends. Pray for that they would know who Jesus is. Pray that they would grow in their faith. Pray that they would stay healthy. And then what is the most fun that you guys have ever had? I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of fun in my lifetime. A lot. I think the biggest thing this week, though, this week, the funnest thing that we did was that we played sardines, which is basically like hide and seek. Um, but when someone hides, then uh, once you find that person, you have to hide with them. And then the last person to find you is the next person that gets to hide. So we played this with our family, with my four-year-old, my two-year-old, and my husband, and um, it's just hilarious, these kids trying to find us. It's so fun, and they just have a blast. They have a blast playing it, and so we've been doing that at nighttime, and it's been, it's been really fun. Uh, so hopefully you guys are having some fun experiences this week at home as well. And then I want you guys to think about this. Who created laughter? God. God created laughter. Laughter is good for our souls. It is good to laugh. It is good to have fun. Uh, remember that. Enjoy your week with your family. Enjoy your time with your siblings. Enjoy playing and having fun this week. And remember, shine your light so that others can see Jesus in you and God can be glorified. Have a great night, guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye.